Hello, greetings. Uh, I would like to share with my pain, along with this pain that makes it difficult to talk or even uh, logically examine this thing properly right now. Uh, in the previous video, I thought about it and to give voice to my thoughts. My reflections and my contemplations about this uh, religion being false and not true. Islam, it's difficult, uh, you see. So yet, I've put it in words. And this may be a slow video. It may take time. I may struggle in my English also, and Urdu also, as you've seen. So, greetings. I'm Zahra Jawad, ex Shia. And as for Islam, I've left altogether. However, just the last few uh, points that I have to put forward as my mind started to trouble me on them again. Like uh, from this Shia research point of view and uh, uh, through the text and seeing things through the text, not only point of view or opinion, but the viewing and the seeing. So I saw that, uh, you know, Abu Bakr uh, seeing the site where uh, the Shia see that Abu Bakr had trapped uh, Prophet Muhammad into marrying his daughter. And uh, so now um, who trapped who really? Uh, we've got to see that. And uh, since I'm not that articulate and I lose my logical points, uh, please bear with me. But I know you will not regret it. You've got to see who trapped who. We, were, uh, we are told in Surah Azab and uh, the commentary, Shia commentary also, uh, that uh, Zainab had to marry Zainab bin Josh, Prophet Muhammad's cousin. So we couldn't uh, figure out the Sunni uh, Umayyad side, how Prophet Muhammad, the, there's a particular hadith about uh, he, him, Rasulullah going to Zaid's house and finding uh, Zainab in uh, very transparent or few clothes on. And then he says, oh, glory be to him whose hearts, who makes hearts turn and all this. So he got attracted. Uh, so how in the world did he get attracted uh, to someone who's, uh, uh, who was his cousin? He could have simply married her, right? Uh, so before giving her to Zed, um, you know, getting her married to Zed. And then when the marriage doesn't work, he uh, his Allah says, uh, he tells uh, Zed, and Allah tells him to tell Zed. We are told in Surah uh, Azab again, verse uh, 37, that, uh, you know, fear Allah and keep your wife, right? Whereas he feared and he hid in his heart and all this. Not to, and uh, so both sides were not making uh, the Shia side on the uh, uh, Zainab bin Josh being the cousin, he could have married that. That remained uh, unanswered for me. All right now, my accent also changing. Change of ac accent could be therapeutic for me. Sorry if you not understand properly. Uh, so I try to straighten my accent, but it's very difficult for my heart. Uh, try to keep this video as uh, short as possible. Okay, let's see. Let's see how I do. So, if you have to learn trapping someone, one should uh, not to learn. Should not one uh, ask yourselves this question? She asks. Should not one learn from Prophet Muhammad how he scare people? Right into obedience to Allah and to Him, even in marriage proposal cases, deciding 
who wants you to get married to, whereas he can decide for himself who he wants to marry, to marry, and even in the Surah Azab, delay or whatever he wishes to do. And in another verse, maybe, you know, some woman offer themselves to him, herself to him, he think about it. And then he not even give so much money in marriage, or what you call that money, dowry, or uh, in, uh, in Islam, what are the terms in Arabic? Sorry, I not to know. So what am I, uh, I'm going to show you, well, if I fail, at least I try and fail. How Muhammad trap Zainab bin Josh, right, and Zaid bin uh, Harith into marriage with each other, even though Zainab bin Josh not to want to get married to Zaid. A very slow because traumatized even now. So uh, as I'm unfolding the truth against this messenger of Allah and its progeny, may I stay away from such devils, writs, and they stay away from me. Yeah, I've reached this point now. I'm saying it bluntly. Leave me liars. Uh, so, you think, if we say Abu Bakr trapped, he may be harassing, that do you get married to my daughter going to him and harassing? He always get harassed so easily and then uh, say that, oh, okay, maybe not easily, but uh, also wives harass him, as we are told in Surah Tahrim, and annoy him and he seek to please his wives, whereas here we are told in Surah Azab, right? I think this is before he get there or he get married to, yeah, just before he get married to Zainab bin Josh, but he's married to Aisha. Oh, Prophet, fear Allah and do not obey the disbelievers and the hypocrites. Indeed, Allah is ever knowing and wise. Right? Or obey or not hearken. Two translations. One from Yusuf Ali. Do not hearken to unbelievers and the hypocrites. Right? So we are told this. Why then he hearkened? to please his annoying wives because they were annoying him. So he hearkened to them and God keep quiet for a long time until they keep uh, annoying him, annoying him, annoying him. And he make a, he make a oath. He say, by Allah, I will not uh, do this, whatever it was. So why he may Allah, you know, he could uh, simply divorce them. And we are told in another verse uh, in the Quran that uh, you can handsomely just uh, divorce them and handsomely let them go if they desire the life of this world from the year after. You know, so they can do this. But uh, maybe I'm not going properly now. You see, here I see the trapping. Why he trap uh, Zainab and Josh? his cousin, which he can marry. Uh, so we Shias drop that. We say, no, 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 Prophet Muhammad, that hadith, uh, zaif, weak, wrong, a lie against Prophet Muhammad. Umayyads make these hadiths to uh, malign Prophet Muhammad, right? Even the uh, hypocritical wives and all this of Prophet Muhammad, like Aisha and Hafsa, uh, the daughters of hypocrites and disbelievers and uh, pagan worshippers, uh, idol worshippers. So, we not to know, we leave the cousin thing uh, alone for now. But if you have to learn, you see, he also make a mistake. So I want to show you how he get away by making mistakes, uh, making a note, hearkening to hypocrites, and uh, pleasing his wives. That those two wives, hypocrites. As we research, uh, as, a, as a Shia, forget what the Shias researched. I also looked into the matter and see 
I find that these wives hypocrites. Aisha annoy Prophet Muhammad to no end. And uh, so thus, I can uh, make out from the Sunni sources, Umayyad sources, that uh, this, these two wives hypocrites. It's all going well with my Shia Islam uh, religion. And Abu Bakr and uh, what Umar do, uh, raising his voice. Umar raised his voice against Prophet Muhammad. He was warned. He started to whisper. This all in hadiths, uh, in Sunni, uh, what the Sunnis take from the Umayyads and from these wives and all that, right? Abu Bakr and Umar and uh, Umayyad side, we see. And it is true, Umayyad side. And uh, so... How I go about now to show my Shias that although Zainab bin Josh was his cousin, then they question me why he not marry her before he get her married to Zed. If he feel attracted to her because she's so beautiful, why he uh, realize after getting her married to Zed bin Harith, Zed bin Harith, right? Yes. Uh, because there's Zed bin Thabit too. Sorry, I keep forgetting. So if I forget, please correct me in your mind for now. But uh, get the gist of the matter. Get the argument, the logical uh, reasoning I give you here. So I go a roundabout manner, like perhaps even Prophet Muhammad go a roundabout manner to get his way. So that the, no one suspect him at all, like Shias, you see, in some cases, this, uh, in all cases, Shias not to suspect Prophet Muhammad, not to blame him for anything. In Surah Abasa, if the Sunni Muslims say, Prophet frowned, we say, no, no, no. And I also read the Hadith and everything, and I say, yeah, Shia, right. That companion, not uh, referring to Prophet Muhammad in Surah Abasa. Abasa. I always mispronounce uh, Surah Abasa because it's not Abbas. You know who Abbas was? Uh, Imam Hussein's uh, stepbrother and uncle, uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad's uncle. Uh, so, like that, uh, Surah, it must be Surah Abasa. So how can a uh, how can this prophet, the great, uh, uh, first of all, frown at a blind man, blind man, blind man not to seeing it, not good our religion, not going with that, right? What we are told, what the great religion, what greatest prophet ever, seal of prophet. So this also okay, you know, agree to the Shia and yes, I do my research. It agree. But now I do a little here. Um, maybe, uh, you know, if you have to learn how to trap people, uh, why you not, uh, she has not to see the side of Prophet Muhammad? That when he make a mistake, what we say? Multilingual Quran in Surah Azab. Right? What we say? So, and by the way, also about inheritance. Zed not getting inheritance, I have to highlight, highlight, yeah? So that, uh, you see here, before going to multilingual Quran on that, what I forget, uh, I come back to this uh, verse, uh, inheritance. But to be kind to a friend. Now, Zed removed as an adopted son, like the pagan Arabs take their adopted sons as real uh, biological they treat them, they give them their inheritance, they give them their inheritance. Finally, Allah removed that. But the, why he make uh, Zed his adopted son? Beginning. He, according to Shia, he know everything from the very beginning, his birth miraculous, bird singing, everything, angels coming perhaps, so, you know, the things like that happening. But in Alama Majlisi, very, very gloomy thing happening, very thriller happening during his birth. I read, 
Nothing like silent night, holy night, uh, what Christians sing when Jesus Christ was born. But that even when Jesus Christ was born, it was not a silent holy night for those that will come. Oh, maybe the, uh, at that time, but later on, King Herod, uh, we are told in the Bible, killed all the uh, children wanting to kill Jesus Christ's child, right? Baby. He's scared, King Herod. So now, what I, back to, um, you see, he removed uh, Z, is Allah, from inheritance when he realized that, oh, now I can do this perhaps. But Allah say I keep changing laws, uh, my, uh, some signs, not the laws, but I keep changing signs for better signs. And how he trapped the Shias, this Prophet Muhammad and his progeny, to never suspect Muhammad in any way, you see? Very, very interesting subject to study and examine. How he, how we get trapped Shias with Imam Hussein's grand sacrifice, unparalleled in history, and Imam Sajjad thereafter, and the women folk of Imam Hussein, the holy family of Prophet Muhammad, granddaughters and all, great granddaughters. Right, so how we miss that he first removed uh, this adoption, which Prophet Muhammad himself married. Oh, sorry, I mean, uh, adopt, adopt uh, Zed himself. No one trapped him into uh, uh, adopting Zed. And Zed not even go with his father when the father find out, come back for him. Uh, Zed say, no, I stay with Prophet Muhammad. So if we say that uh, for Bibi Fatima to Zara and Imam Ali, the only people you trust who will uh, circulate God's money, the money that is there, you know, people earn and everything you get from the spoils of war or, or without the spoils with peace, Fada given to the, uh, by the Jews to Prophet Muhammad, given to his daughter Fatima. Fay. Fay, it is called Fay, uh, peacefully. Uh, so he take Fadak. They give him Fadak. Jizya, uh, Christians, Ida Mubaila, highlighting, right? Now, question comes that why are you not trust Zed ben Harith when he leave his father everything? Okay, not your blood, but uh, do you not trust him that he will not uh, circulate this money? Later on, we are told he died in that war, but Imam Ali survived. He go for that battle he sent, right? He's killed. He in the forefront, the poor guy gets killed. But okay, Ali and Fatima's Ali survive and have children with Fatima and their ch his grandchildren also getting uh, the spoils of war and all this money so that it can be properly uh, circulated. We have the, uh, what do you call that, uh, the Islamic uh, bank, you know, without, oh, not take uh, this interest and all this uh, where you are at war with Allah and messenger of Allah. And all this, so we have this great Islamic banking and uh, circulation of money. Only trust the uh, uh, Fatima and Ali, and then thereafter uh, the Imams of this Al Al Bayt, Prophet Muhammad's progeny, which Allah make Imams. He chose which son, even of the Imam, that Allah make. So here we can learn, uh, and so this is verse uh, regarding verse 5 of Surah Azab, right? Um, Call them by the names of their fathers, it is more just the sight of Allah. Okay, this is not important, but uh, no, no, sorry, 
verse 6 6 verse 6 of surah azab the prophet is more worthy of the believers than themselves and his wives are in the position of their mothers here he make his wives the mothers he himself not to father coming later verse in the surah azab i think huh and then we are told in this verse uh, number six again, right? And those of blood the relationship are more entitled to inheritance in the decree of Allah than the other believers and the emigrants. Except that you may do to your close associates a kindness, which in bracket uh, Sahih International put through bequest through bequest. You can do some kindness if you like. If you not like, do it. So Zed getting some crumbs, perhaps, you know, but not uh, what the, the blood the relationship getting. And he makes Zed, and look at the trapping. Now we go to, so I only highlight, please pay attention to how this Muhammad trap people. He not trap Zed, uh, he not trap Zainab and Josh. He actually indirectly we are uh, here. Verse 36. Right? To marry. Uh, I forget why he could have uh, done this. I must have given a reason in my previous video uh, some time ago. Uh, so, yes, here it is. Again, I'm reading this verse. Part of it, 37, right, of Surah Azab. And remember, O Muhammad, when you said to the one on whom Allah bestowed favor, remember, remember, O Muhammad is in brackets, when you said to the one on whom Allah bestowed favor, and you bestowed favor, keep your wife and fear Allah, while you concealed within yourself that which Allah is to disclose. What is Allah to disclose? That he's going to marry, he, uh, the marriage is going to, is doomed. Right? But then isn't this an artificial way of saying superficially when he knows? But what are we told? That Zed really did fear Allah and kept his wife. I mean, Zed should have kept his wife or uh, they both uh, keep each other. Uh, with each other, keep together. What a way of saying it, keep your wife. Uh, does Zed have a problem with Zainab and Josh? Zed, poor, you know, he always so obedient to Prophet Muhammad. What he do? He like a slave anyways to Prophet Muhammad. Right? Who really trapped whom? You can see from these ayats how Muhammad used Allah you see? Now you read the rest of the ayat and see what this coming to. Then going up again, who trapped whom? How you trap a person? By annoying him going uh, or this way, using Allah. Because I tell you this false prophet and then you decide, you will come to this. That yes, Abu Bakr trapping him to marry his uh, six-year-old, nine-year-old daughter, or even 19-year-old daughter. Oh, yes. Oh, no. By annoying him, saying, if you're not, uh, oh, yeah, okay, what, uh, whatever, I not to read. Uh, maybe I read this some time ago. I forget. Shia account uh, how Abu Bakr can trap uh, Prophet Muhammad into marrying his daughter. So here we come and how, but here look how this person trapping people. It is not for a believing, believing men or believing women uh, whom when Allah and his messenger have decided the matter for you, that you, you should thereafter have any choice about their affair. This is about uh, Zainab and Josh's marriage to that she have to, uh, it is a command. 
even if she not the like to marry it against the will Muhammad al Baqir tell us Imam Muhammad al Baqir the fifth Imam of the Shia Twelver tell us that yes she was not and I can go now and read again but I don't want to multilingual Quran commentary Akapuya and Ame Ali commentary. So once it is established that this is a false prophet, how he trapped uh, Zena bin Josh, force, force Zena bin Josh to marry Zed, and marriage also not working, and then it break. Then he get married to her to compensate. We are told. So he's uh, so that the uh, Sunni hadith uh, that uh, his heart turn and he become lustful for Zainab, not true. Very very good. He get himself out from everything. How he trapped Shias also and brainwashed. You see, I will show you. It is not for a believing man or a believing woman when Allah and his messenger have decided the matter that they should thereafter have any choice about the affair. Sorry, my heart uh, heavy. And whoever disobeys Allah and his messenger has certainly strayed into clear error. So obey him, obey his messenger. And how Abu Bakr trap? Good God. He not the need to obey anyone but Allah. Right? And he say Abu Bakr trap him to marrying his daughter. Hey, how can they, if a, if a Prophet Muhammad proposal go, even if your daughter two year old, you have to say yes, yes. She can wait, but yes, a Prophet Muhammad. According to this verse, you cannot say no to Prophet Muhammad, even if you are the mother and uh, father of that daughter. Two year old. When she become nine, I marry her. Now you put my name on her. Can the parents say no to Prophet Muhammad? This not exhausted in Shia Islam. Shia way of research. Exhausted meaning you consider this part and see whether, uh, you know, you can say, uh, no, there was no way, there was no way uh, that uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad uh, could, uh, uh, that uh, Abu Bakr, wait a minute, exhausted means that uh, there was a way out for, uh, let's put it this way, right, logically, uh, I'm thinking. Uh, so I want to take a pause. Okay, like I say in the previous video, if uh, Abu Bakr could have uh, trapped the messenger of Allah, and if there was a way for uh, the, let's say, was there a way for the messenger of Allah to come out of this trap without marrying Aisha? But here in the Quran ayahs, we are told that the uh, prophet muhammad you cannot disobey so parents consent also like prophet muhammad if he say so is there a way uh, that we can say no to prophet muhammad when he asks us for something when he give us even take it there's a ayat that i have to now i will not go researching or uh, searching for it on google search what he gives you, take it. Right? There's an ayat in the Quran. What the messenger gives you, take it. So, there's, uh, you have to see that you can't exhaust this possibility. This possibility exists here, right in front, under our noses, in front of our eyes. That Abu Bakr and the mother of Aisha could not say no to a messenger of Allah if he asked for 
their daughter, even if she is two years old, let's say, right? And many other things here, but uh, under uh, about this, I put this point. Point of view or through the text we are seeing. How cunning and conniving he work and put the blame on Abu Bakr, put the blame on Umar, put the blame on them. Now, when he make a mistake also here, uh, verse 5 we are told, uh, right, back to verse 5 of Surah Azab. So wait, before I go to verse 5, I read out uh, verse 7 and mention, O Muhammad, when we took from the prophets their covenant and from you, you and from Nu and Abraham and Moses and Jesus, the son of Mary, and we took from them a solemn covenant. Very good. He stick to his covenant, right? You have to. Solemn covenant. But did he stick to God's ways? He make mistakes. He hearken to hypocrites because they annoy him. Should God not protect him? And God say in Surah Tarim that Allah is his protector. And so is uh, the angel Gabriel and the righteous among the believers. So how they annoy him? Right? That he have to make an oath to them. Promise them that he will not do what Allah allowed him to do. And he forbid himself. He completely forbid. What kind of a solemn covenant? You can make mistakes. It's a pity like the in Philadelphia story, the movie, you know, the dialogue says, uh, he says uh, to his wife, it's a pity your uh, foot doesn't slip sometime. But his foot has slipped. In Surah Tehrim we are told. In uh, Surah Hazab we are told. He's made, so, and what here? Eighth verse of Surah Azab, that he may question the truthful about their truth. Can you not, we, I'm questioning his truthfulness now. And he has prepared for the disbelievers a painful punishment. What happened here? Verse 7 and verse 8 of Surah Azab. And remember when we took from we took from the prophets their covenant, and they're supposed to abide by it. It's a very solemn covenant. We took from them a solemn covenant. If you make a mistake, how can you blame others? Then, right? You've chucked the now Z out of inheritance. That's what you do. You practice the pagan Arab practice, custom of uh, adopting sons and giving them their inheritance. Pagan Arabs even better. But somehow this person turn, decide that, no, wait a minute. I take Fatima and Ali. Now you look at because we have to look at it through all sides. That did he think like this? So he used Allah to say, okay, oops, I made the mistake. I adopted the Z as uh, the pagan Arab. And you know, against the pagan Arab, everything, even water they give to the pilgrimage in the ayat, one ayat coming in my mind. They say, no, no, you think that it is equivalent to believing in Allah and the hereafter? No, no. And then the Shias go on that the Pani uh, animals also give to stray animals, birds and things like that, and not your pets only. Right? But you have to believe in Allah and the hereafter. Otherwise your deed of giving water to stray animals also not acceptable. As we are told in one of the verses in the Quran against the pagan idol worshippers, what they do in the sacred uh, house or, uh, you know, for the pilgrimages, 
for the pilgrim, sorry, for as a, 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 coming for pilg pilgrimage to the Kaaba, to the sacred house. Right? So unacceptable, even their good deed. You not to believe in Allah the way with Allah. You think Allah not there for the pagans? Some Allah there, you must do research, which Allah was there for the pagans. And he said, no, there only one Allah. So there only one Allah goddess, if she female, right? Another one may be Allah, another Manat, and another Uza. And all these, what are we told? Taking us to Allah, the one and only. In Surah Zumar, what do these pagan idol worshippers say? We get close to them, we, we take them as protectors, that they bring us close to God. So how you, your Allah, okay, maybe uh, I calm down a little, calm down uh, here. Uh, I um, then forget my proper logic, logical uh, reasoning through uh, in in reflection to the Quran ayats and what he do uh, so he say what are not uh, what you if you not believe in Allah and the last day forget that water you are giving to the pilgrimages pagan idol Arab oh uh, what pagan Arab idol worshippers right it uh, ziyan, it gone to waste, nothing, no good deed. You think it equal? This how he's trapping people and deceiving people and betraying people. And we not to see him. And then we say that uh, he not to make any mistake. Oh, really? And uh, so sorry, I put it this way. And if I have to, uh, Zahra, I have to explain to myself which I am, as I go along, sharing with you, opening your eyes. My eyes are open wide, seeing this shock of my life. A uh, religious crisis happening. My world turning upside down. And there is no blame upon you for that in which you have erred. Prophet Muhammad, in bracket, I should put here, not put uh, Sahih International. Who are you referring to? <laughs> Look at the, the ayat 5 of Surah Azab, 33 chapter. I'm on this. So, how you Shias get trapped? I mean, how this uh, person trap? You know, put the wrong blame, saying, I trapped, I trapped. He forced Zainab and Josh to get married to Zed. Marriage not work. We still say, Ya Rasulullah, uh, what a, Ya Abu Qasim al Muhammad, and what a mercy, what a prophet. And you hear, you hear now if you are Urdu speakers, you hear the, uh, what Talib Johari say, what Allama, Iqba, uh, Allama Rashid Turabi say about the blessings that Allah sent because of this prophet on earth. Great blessings, great. Unending showers of blessings coming, unbelievers. Greatest blessings coming. And what he, what Abu Qasim Muhammad, what Muhammad Mustafa, right? You hear Talib Jawari, and you hear Allah, Iqba, uh, Allah Marashi Turabi, Allah my Allah keep saying sorry. What? And there is no blame upon you for that in which you have erred. What do you say those who keep changing and making mistakes and uh, but when Allah change an ayat for a better ayat that Allah have a great reason for it. But if pagans make an oath they always keep breaking their oaths and all this what nonsense. They are towing. We are told that Abu Bakr never break his oath. Isn't he better than Prophet Muhammad? We were told in, I read somewhere in uh, the Sunni sources, 
Abu Bakr was not the kind of person who could break oaths. He never broke oaths. I cannot uh, remember the Hadith number and all this. I can uh, search for it. But I want to make this video very, very short. You can search, Google search. Everything is there now and at our fingertips. Uh, you, I hope you are more, you have strength and, uh, you know, you have that power. My health deteriorating, my, and very in shock. So what else have I missed? Have I tried or do I have to go to, have I done my best to convince you? Or I will take another, uh, so a few examples I want to give here, I highlight to show you that uh, where it's leading, who trap whom, who deceive whom, who betray whom, and what this all about, right? So I not uh, I want to go to multilingual Quran. I open it here uh, to show you something. What a mistake! What uh, huh? Buya Ali commentary. Okay, before I go, let me just read. Uh, here it is said that, uh, or your, um, uh, but there is no blame on you if you make a mistake therein. What counts is the intention of your hearts. And Allah is of forgiving, of returning most merciful. Commentary under Surah Azab verse 5 in multilingual Quran, uh, Puya Ali commentary says, Call the adopted sons by their natural fathers and not by those who have adopted them, which corresponds with truth and reality. It is better to call them brothers in faith or friends. I want to ask you, Shias, oh, forget the Sunni Muslims right now. Sorry, I don't mean to sound disrespectful for the Sunni Muslim, but I just, uh, that finished right here also abu bakr idol pagan idol worshiper uh, so his case for a uh, pagan idol worshiper not the sunni how sunnis take abu bakr now here back to this oh really oh sorry i have to be so rude uh, sorry if i sound rude <laughs> like i'm like oh really are we are you shocked because you know mother was coming wives that doesn't correspond to truth and reality does it prophet muhammad's wives cannot marry others uh, even after his death because they are the mothers of the all the believers and does that which the quran points out here puts it in verse that uh, Wives of the Prophet Muhammad, women of the what? Wives of the Prophet Muhammad, Zawja, are mothers of the believers. So please apply this. What are Imams? Are intelligence defeated here? Say to us. What Imam Ali? Say to us. Call the adopted sons by their natural fathers and not to by those who have adopted them, which corresponds with truth and reality. Then why does God not correspond to truth and reality about the prophet's wives, making them the mothers of the believers? Can you tell me? Do you have an answer for that? Apply this to that, she asks, and tell me. Right? So I was a little... I thought I would never be able to talk about this uh, right now, but I was also restless to bring it out. And then you would say that uh, hurrying is uh, on, uh, you know, uh, what uh, is it? Uh, the shaitan's work, uh, you know. So patient contemplation, when you can talk about it, when you have the heart to talk about it, then you can say it. But sorry about my broken way and this way and that way, highlighting and all this uh, disheveled, uh, uh, disorderly way of bringing, uh, the, showing you the truth and sharing it with you at a time when in, I'm in great pain and shock still. Uh, and my heart has been paining and uh, so much. Okay, so thank you very much. I will continue later. I just wanted to 
quickly come with this and it the quick is like 44 minutes now I've been talking uh, I wanted to make it short also thank you very much have a great uh, truthful honest uh, day forever <laughs>